1938, something super cool happened. Lawrence Hammond, that's right, the Hammond organ guy, and Charles Williams and John Hannard got together and designed a new musical instrument using this incredible electronic technology. But they did something unique. They wanted to create a keyboard device that was polyphonic and you had a whole spread of notes that you could play. And the way they figured out to do this was that if you took a pitch and you divided that pitch in half, you got an octave below. So they took 12 oscillators and tuned each oscillator to a note, the note of a piano, of an octave of a piano. They had these 12 notes. They found that by dividing the frequency of each of those notes, you could get the pitches for the octave below that. And then by dividing those divided pitches, you could get the, the notes for the, no, for the octave below that, and on and on down. And this is a technique that we have come to call divide down technology. Basically, you're taking 12 frequencies and continuously dividing them in half to get the octave below the frequencies that they are. So in that way, 12 oscillators could provide the notes for the entirety of the keyboard. And they could all be played simultaneously, which is to say you could play more than one note at a time, unlike the theremin or the honest Martineau. The boys at Hammond did something really cool. In order to shape the, the sound of the output from these oscillators, they included several formant filters. Formant filters are filters that resonate at certain frequencies. So what a filter would do is it would help you change or diminish the frequencies that were present in the sound of the oscillator. So the filter would allow you to shape the tone color of the sound. And as you probably know, filters became a very major part of synthesizers in the future. But this was the first implementation of a fully controllable group of filters. In addition to that, the Hammond Nova Chord had two presets, percussion and singing. And what these presets really were, they were not sound settings at all, but two different types of articulation because the Hammond Nova Chord had a tube-based envelope. So you could have sounds with a slow attack and a slow decay, or a fast attack and a fast decay. And of course, you could control volume with the volume pedal as well. Uh, the initial, the prototype of the Nova Chord was actually touch sensitive, like a piano. So the harder you hit the keys, the louder it was. Unfortunately, this proved too expensive and they decided to cut it out of the production models. So controlling the volume was either using this primitive envelope or using the swell pedal, which reminded a lot of people of an organ, which became problematic for the Nova Chord. In any case, lastly, the Nova Chord actually had a low frequency oscillator. Although we'll just call it vibrato because that's what it was. And it wasn't just that it was a uh, low frequency oscillator. What it really was, was a mechanical vibrato circuit that employed mechanical technology to create a really diverse uh, vibrato that was more natural, more music-like, not just a variation in pitch, which would sound sort of spiritless and boring. This, uh, there were two different uh, vibrato circuits that could be used to create a really natural vibrato sound. So this device was designed to create sounds that had never been heard, and it could do that. It was very limited, and topping out at over 160 tubes, uh, the thing was quite incredible. It weighed about 500 pounds. Uh, it looked like a piano. Uh, it was not a piano. It had some controls that reminded people of organs. It was not an organ. It was the prototype for the synthesizer. Its intent was to use oscillators, filters, envelope, and fluctuation to create never before heard sounds, which as you might know, sounds an awful lot like the intent of the synthesizer. So the Hammond Nova Chord, I always say, it was the first production prototype for the future synthesizer. And also, it had a beautiful, beautiful sound. But the fantastic thing about the Nova Chord was that it did inspire future inventors, like Bob Moog, for example.